Today I'm showing you exactly how to mod your Nintendo Switch in 2025, step by step, no fluff, no BS. This works on the latest firmware, yes even 21.0 plus, and will unlock endless possibilities on your Switch. Custom firmware, homebrew apps, backups of games, custom themes, well, you got it. Mod at your own risk, there's always a slim chance of getting banned from online play if you goof up. We'll avoid that, and remember this could void your warranty, but if you follow along carefully, you will be fine. Alright, let's do this. First, make sure your Switch is actually exploitable without a hardware mode chip. Nintendo patched the original Switch hardware midway through 2018. All Switch Lite, OLED and 2019 Plus, which are called Mariko model switches, are patched. Those require a mode chip soldered in to mod, not covered in this video. The only models you can soft mode for free are the early version 1 Switch consoles from 2017 to early 2018. Now how to check that? Go to ismyswitchpatch.com, link is in the description. Enter your Switch serial number found on the bottom of the console or in the system settings, serial info. This site will tell you one of the three things. Unpatched. Congrats, your Switch can be modded via this guide. Potentially patched. You might be able to mod, nothing bad will happen if you try. The exploit will just fail if it's patched, so you can still attempt this guide. And patched. Unfortunately, no software exploit works on these. You would need a hardware mode chip or a different Switch. And before I forget, Get it, all the packs that we are using in this specific video will work on mode chip switches too. So if your switch has a mode chip or it's an unpatched or you're daring with a potentially unit, let's continue. So gather these things before starting. A Windows PC or Linux slash Mac with some extra steps with internet to download files. A micro SD card at least 64 GB recommended. You can get by with 32 GB if you want to make an emunant, but honestly 64 GB plus is better for games and homebrew. You also need a micro SD SD card reader for your PC or an SD slot. Then you need a USB-C cable, make sure that it is data transfer capable to connect your switch to the PC. And last but not least, you will need an RCM jig, a small tool that lets your switch enter recovery mode. Now what else you would need is software packs in which you will have the custom firmware files and patches inside. Good news, I've compiled everything you need into one pack for convenience. Grab the latest switch custom firmware pack from the link in the description, host it on my telegram channel, just make sure to click here on the pinned message and then you you will come here into those chats and you want to click here on the homebrew packs in which you then find the newest packs to download, right? And those packs include Atmosphere, Hecate, the bootloader, signature patches and some extra like safety measures. It's everything needed for basic modding. Now something that is optional is the mecha package on Patreon. If you want 50 plus homebrew apps, emulators, custom themes and an even easier setup, I've got a mecha package available through my Patreon. It's optional. What else you will need is a GUI format or partition assistant program to format your SD card to FAT32, then we also use Tigra RCM GUI, the PC program to send the payloads to your Switch. And once you have everything, like every tool and files downloaded, we're ready for the fun part. Start by formatting the micro SD to FAT32. So back up anything important on your micro SD card. Insert the SD card, open GUI format, choose FAT32 and format. For that you can either use Rufus, which is a file that you can download on the internet. Yeah, it's for free and it's very very basic. And I right now used here our main partition manager, but to be fair, everything works. After you made sure your micro SD card is on FAT32, extract the custom firmware pack from the Telegram or the Patron and copy everything like Atmosphere, Bootloader and all the other folders into your SD card. Now we want to enter RCM and this is only needed for unpatched switches, okay? Connect your switch with your computer via a USB-C to USB cable and then power it off. Take the right Joy-Con out and insert the RCM jig into the right rail. Now once you did that, you want to download Tigra RCM, you will find the link inside the description, put it on your desktop, make sure that it isn't in the zip file, you want to start the execute file, then you want to go to driver, install the driver, and once you have the drivers installed, you want to go back here, and then click on the folder icon, and make sure that you take the payloads.bin file out of the package that you downloaded before to your desktop, so that you can actually choose it over the Tigra RCM GUI. Once you have that payload.bin file on your Tigra RCM GUI, and you have it connected to your Nintendo Switch via the USB-C to USB cable, make sure to hold down the power up button while clicking once on the power button like me right here. If everything worked great, then you should see here on Tigra RCM, RCM OK. And finally, click on inject payload which will then boot up Hecate on your Nintendo Switch. Now if you have a mode chip switch, it's very easy, you don't need to use Tigra RCM, you just need to put the micro SD card back into your switch and then launch power and as you can see here is the light, then as you can see it will boot directly into Hecate which is just nice. 
On Hecate, make sure to click on Emu MMC and then create Emu MMC and then click there on SD Partition. Then here you want to allocate space for Immunant. Make sure that you take 29 GB for normal switch or switch light and about 58 GB for OLED switches. Then make sure that here just stands full and then confirm partitioning. After partitioning, it will take around 15 minutes. Go to Emu MMC, choose create Emu MMC, then SD partition. Let it copy your NAND to the SD partition. When finished, you should see here Emu MMC info and selection enabled. Because we partitioned our microSD card, a lot of files could have been deleted. So what we want to do is to go to the home menu of Hecate again, go to tools, then USB tools, and then SD card while having it connected via a USB-C to USB to your computer. This will directly connect your microSD card with your computer. And as you can see, it will pop up here on my computer. Here, we simply can drag and drop everything once again inside from the pack which we have downloaded. So if you have the Mega package, just take everything from the Mega package once again here inside. And if you have the Telegram pack, then just take everything from the Telegram package here inside and then just make sure that you click on replace files if it asks you to. Now once you replaced everything and everything is once again inside your micro SD card you can just right click the drive from your Nintendo Switch and eject it and then you can just close and close to get back to the home menu of your Hecate bootloader. Then here you want to click on launch and you have three different versions which you can boot. You can boot up custom firmware SysNet which is basically the normal system of your Switch that you used before but with the custom firmware installed like the jailbreak installed. Then you have custom firmware Emu MMC. This is the Emunet that we created before. It is a complete emulation, like a complete clone of your system on your micro SD card, which is completely isolated from your normal system, which means everything that happens there, your normal system will never know. And this is just very cool because you can crash it, you can destroy it, etc. And your normal system will work normally. And then we have stock SysNet, which is just basically the normal system as you had it before without any jailbreak, without any homebrew, etc. And this is the safest one that you can use for playing online again, because it won't have like any connection to your Immunant and since your Immunant is isolated etc. But right now we want to start into Immunant because we want to jailbreak and see the stuff that we can do on a jailbroken Nintendo Switch. What else I wanted to tell you is that my pack includes DNS blocking to protect your system from accidentally Nintendo connections. So your system can't get banned by this because you can't connect to the Nintendo servers. That's really great. Now once you're here inside, if you go into the settings and then scroll all the way down to system, you will see here your version that you have installed on your Nintendo Switch. As you can see, I have right now 19.0.0, but this will go up to any version that you have right now. And then on the other side here, you will see the Atmosphere version that you have installed. Right now we have 1.10, which supports up to 21.00. And this is just great. If we then go here to the album, as you can see, you will directly open the homeroom menu and here you will see all the apps that you have installed. Now, right now we don't have a lot because if you have the Telegram pack, then you will just have like those three options here. But if you have the Mega package, then you will have all of those options here that I'm showing right now. I also want to show you how you can install games and themes. So let's click here on the USB transfer file thing that will directly connect your Nintendo Switch with your computer. Just make sure that you have a USB to USB-C connection, of course. Then you will have the micro SD card on your desktop again. Now what you want to do is to click on the link inside the description where you can actually download the Unix themes installer. Make sure that you download the NRO file. And what you want to do is to go to your micro SD card and then go to the folder themes. If you don't have it, then just create it on your computer and drag and drop it inside, but right now I already have it. In order to download themes, you would need to go to Themeser. I have the link also of this inside the description. And then you can basically download here any theme and then make sure that you drag and drop it into this folder. Then we will get back to the homebrew menu and now you should see Annex Themes Installer. Just open that up, come here to the themes, choose whatever you want to install. And once you have it installed, you just need to reboot the system. And afterwards you will find it here. As you can see, it will be here in the settings of my Switch because the theme that I downloaded was only for the settings page of the Nintendo switch. But now coming to install games. For that we use something that is called Tinwoo and NS USB loader. You need to download a Tinwoo.nro file and I didn't found it online for version 21.00 so I actually updated it on my own and you can find that in the telegram group. You will see Tinwoo.nro for 21.00 and up. You can download that and just drag and drop this specific file also onto the switch folder of your micro SD card. And once again, I just connected my switch via the USB-C to USB cable. Then we want to go out of here. We want to go to Tinwu, click on OK, OK, and then just come here to USB installation. Now we want to come back to our computer and download an USB loader. We want to download the jar file. You will find the link inside the description again. Once you have that jar file in the folder, you want to make sure that you have Java installed. If you don't have Java installed, just Google it and install it. Now, if you double click it with Java installed and it opens up, you're good to go, but most likely it won't. What you would need to do is to click 
you on the path, type in CMD. So just make sure that you copy paste the command that I will have in the description here inside, and then you should be good to open it up. Just go here into the settings, install driver, and then afterwards you can search here for NSP and XCI game files. Just choose the ones that you have dumped, and then make sure that you upload them to your Nintendo Switch. As you can see, we will also see here a connection that works. And if you click here on upload, then you will see actually the games that you can install. And then you can even choose if you want to install them on your SD card or your internal storage. Now you have a fully modded Switch with Atmosphere, custom firmware, Immunant, Hecate, Tinbu, custom themes and protections in place. Stay offline in custom firmware, stay clean in Sysnet, don't cheat online and enjoy homebrew. Don't forget to smile. My name is you. Peace.